Hi guys, it's Monday and that means it's Jazz Day on Waxing On. You may have noticed we had a new set today, kind of brighten things up a little bit. We're in episode 21, I believe it is. Now uh, today we're looking at music of Dizzy Gillespie. Now I have two albums in particular I'm going to look at, and one is the greatest jazz concert ever. This was released as a two record set on Prestige Records back in the 70s. The alternate title, and I'll show you that because it'll come up again later, was Jazz at Massey Hall. Now you may recall we talked about Massey Hall in Toronto back during the Chuck Mangione video as the place where he recorded Land of Make Believe. Now this concert, I'm just going to read you a little bit from the liner notes to give you a little background on the concert. And it said, in its entirety, the two sets that made up the memorable and unrepeatable evening in 1953 when a Toronto, Canada Jazz Society invited what they considered the five greatest jazz men of the day to appear together. Aside from the single fact that the trio selections were performed first, this is exactly what took place at Massey Hall. So we had a trio of jazz players and what that happened is the Toronto Jazz Society had voted on who they thought the greatest jazz men of the time were and invited them all to come together for a, a jam session evening. So on the trio, we have Bud Powell on piano, Max Roach on drums, and Charles Mingus on bass. And what they did was they recorded, it's a two record set, one record has two sides involving the trio, and that would have been like the warm up group, they came out and played first. And then for the second set, which was the other album here with two sides, they brought out the lead players for sax and trumpet being Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. So this is, originally it was released the uh, the full section with all five of them was released as uh, Jazz at Massey Hall, which is why I showed you this side as well. It was on Fantasy Records. And the other trio sections were released on Fantasy as well as Bud Powell Trio with Charles Mingus and Max Roach. Now, the trio played first. Uh, their set consisted of Embraceable You, Sure Thing, My Devotion, Polka Dots and Moonbeams, Cherokee, Jubilee, I've got you under my skin, my heart stood still, I want to be happy, and lullaby of Birdland. So in the second set, when they brought out Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, their set consisted of Perdido, Salt Peanuts, All Things You Are, We, Hot House, and of course, A Night in Tunisia. It's another great album, five of the best jazz men of the time put together for an evening of music, and this group probably never appeared again to record. Uh, this one was a 2-4, so I mean we got two records for the price of one. I don't know if it's on the streaming networks or whether it's on individually. It might be on as Jazz at Massey Hall. It might be on as uh, the greatest jazz concert ever. But you can take a look at those. And this wasn't Dizzy's only trip to Toronto. Uh, I'd seen Dizzy at the Belvedere Jazz Fest that we talked about when we mentioned Maynard Ferguson. He was there, and I've got a picture of Dizzy and Mo Coughlin standing out in the middle of the field just talking to each other. In those days, uh, they didn't have everybody secluded. The performers were wandering around in amongst the audience and talking to people. And it was in the, uh, I'm going to say the mid-1980s, we had the chance to see Dizzy Gillespie and Mo Coughlin together perform in Ottawa at the National Arts Centre, where they did a lot of their great bebop tunes. Now, the next album I want to talk about is also involves Dizzy Gillespie and another connection to Toronto, which was Oscar Peterson. Oscar Peterson was a resident of the greater Toronto area. Now in the 1980s, Pablo put out a number of albums, Norman Grants was uh, producing, which paired Oscar Peterson up with a number of different performers. Um, one case in point, here's Oscar Peterson and Milt Jackson. And one here that's unique in another aspect uh, Oscar Peterson and Roy Eldridge is on this album Oscar Peterson just doesn't play piano but also plays organ and I really don't know how many uh, examples of Oscar Peterson's organ playing exist but great album for that as well but the one we're going to mention or get back to was with Dizzy Gillespie of course and this was another one on Pablo called Oscar Peterson meets the trumpet summit Dizzy Gillespie, Freddie Hubbard and Clark Terry. Backup band includes Oscar, of course. We've got Joe Pass on guitar, Ray Brown on bass. And basically these guys just take turns soloing on the tunes. We have some trading fours. Now, for some reason, like I'm looking at first one here, Dahoon, uh, Freddie Hubbard, open horn, Clark Terry mute, Dizzy open horn, 
Sometimes Clark Terry's on flugelhorn. They, they probably do different instruments, although to me, they all sound very different to begin with. I mean, no matter who was playing, you would know who it was. And as well on this, we got Chicken Wings, Just Friends, and The Champ. So just a, a four song set, but a lot of great soloing and a lot of great trumpet players. Now, I didn't have a lot of Dizzy Gillespie albums during that period. Um, I have some more on CD, I guess, but not actually albums. So these were two of the, the albums that really stood out from 1953 when Bebop was really fairly new. We've got Dizzy Gillespie and uh, Charlie Parker. Then we've got Dizzy blending in with some other great trumpet players here with Freddie Hubbard and Clark Terry and seeing how each of them approach the music with the great Oscar Peterson trio behind them. So two great albums by Dizzy, one on Pablo, one on Fantasy. If you get a chance, check them out. I uh, appreciate you stopping by. We'll be back on Wednesday when we're looking at classic rock. Everybody stay home, stay safe, and we'll see you on Wednesday.